Hi, and welcome to the second session of Baking Made Easy, sponsored by Dove's Farm. My name is Anthony Clay, the chef, food writer and columnist here at The Telegraph. And in this 45 minute brownie masterclass, I'm going to be joined by the quintessential designer, baker and author, Frances Quinn, as she shows her how, us how to make her signature brick brownies designed with a playful twist. And so without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Frances to get started. Hi, I was about to say afternoon. It's the evening. <laughs> Hi, Zanthi. Lovely to meet you. And welcome everyone else watching from all over, I think. Um, so yeah, as Anthony said, I'm going to be showing you how to make, it's probably my most signature um, recipe from my book. So it's the Bourbon Brick Brownie. So it's the idea of pairing like a British classic biscuit, like the Bourbon, as Anthony's showing there. Um, Oops, just make it. Oops. <laughs> that's all right, then go in the brownie, with a brownie. So you get that mix of texture. Um, and it's really no more complicated than you making a usual brownie. It's just that you've got the added addition of a biscuit on the base. Um, and I'm going to be talking through how you can sort of use this approach of lots of other different biscuits, just in case you're not a fan of the bourbon. Um, so, yeah, the first thing, just so we can get going for those that are baking along at home, is to put the oven on, put the oven on to 180 and then... Once you've done that, because probably the most technical thing of this recipe is that you need to divide the bourbon biscuits before you lay them on the base. And some of the bourbons, they break a little bit like sort of um, example you were showing there. So I find the easiest way is that if you got 200 grams of bourbons in the recipe, but if you take nine of them out, because we're going to be making 18 bricks in total, so we're going to be splitting these nine. So if you just place nine of the biscuits just on a tray, and then just place them in the oven for just sort of like three to five minutes. And if the oven's just heating, it may take a little bit longer. Okay. So that's the first thing to do. So are you, you um, Francis, we just got Octavia from Italy oh. asking if you can use different biscuits. And I think you can, can't you? You're gonna be yeah. telling us more about Loads all, of them, all different sorts. You can use them whole. I'm even being inspired to maybe do a sort of Gaudi mosaic inspired one. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a platform to many different versions, but yeah. So if you just take nine of your biscuits, mm -hmm. just place them on a tin can be a, like that. Brilliant. Like Santi's doing just pop them in the oven. I mean, you initially I was just splitting with a knife, but you end up with quite a few casualties there. <laughs> so, um, just leave them to um, warm in the oven for a little bit. Um, so while they're doing that, I'm just wondering if anyone's got any questions just while we're waiting for that bit. Oh yeah, really good question here. I've eaten one bourbon, does it matter, says Sylvia. No, no. This just one, this, I might be in the same place. One less bourbon in the recipe. <laughs> 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 Excellent. And we've got some sugar questions. Um, Gina wondered whether she could use light brown sugar instead of caster sugar. And Pauline's been wondering if uh, we can reduce the sugar a little bit. Yeah. So I actually, the one that I've got, here's one I made earlier, earlier on in the week. I actually use dark brown sugar. So it doesn't really matter too much. It's just going to depend on then how much sort of like more treacly your brownie is. So I'm using caster sugar today but you can use golden caster sugar soft brown's good i mean if you've got like a mix of sugars like you've only got 100 grams of caster and 100 grams of light brown then blend the two it doesn't really matter too much and i also i top up some of the sugar with golden syrup or i reduce some of the normal flowing sugar for golden syrup so it ends up with a more fudgy brownie and you can also then use honey or maple syrup in regards to reducing the sugar, you you certainly can. Um, in fact, I've sometimes even blended up dates or banana um, in, in place of the sugar as well. So it's um, part of the sugar does make it sort of really go caramelized and fudgy, but I probably, you could probably afford to reduce it by a third potentially or maybe a quarter so just sort of play around with um it's everyone's taste buds really so but yeah but as, as regards to sugar you can just if you're there and you're really wanting to make brownies and you've only got a, like a mix of sugars then still make it don't feel oh i haven't got the precise amount of the sugar in the recipe 
I love recipes like that. They yeah. just, you know, yeah. the, whatever. So yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'm reckoning before we completely bake the bake the biscuits. If you do, you want to check on yours? Yeah. You can be our our check. Yeah, yes. Gosh, I hope I've burnt them. <laughs> they all good. Okay, here we go. It does mean double bake, doesn't it? So we're sort of it does. we're going to be triple bake. Oh, look, that's so clever! Look, they just come apart. They just pull good. apart. But the other thing that's great about that, Francis, I'm thinking, is that I was getting quite worried about which bit the filling like where the filling was going to go yeah means it's kind of split in half you're getting split in half exactly so yeah. just then if you just divide your biscuits now while they're still well so chocolatey now i mean they're probably yeah. a few more are probably going to go missing that aren't going to go <laughs> um like i said mm. if it's a warm day and the biscuits are quite warm they will just split with a knife just step down mm. the middle but oh, here's a lovely idea um jlm has asked um can you use caramel caramel instead of golden syrup i guess you can like the sort of um caramel that you can get in like the tin or the mm -hmm. jars i've even done marmalade when i'm doing Ooh. chocolate cake brownies i'll come back to that another time but marmalade's really good um in fact the original recipe for this because they're bourbon i actually mm -hmm. use malt extract oh um, what does that do if you use malt adds a really dare i say more deep multi flavor um mm. but it's just you can find it at like chemist or holland and barrett but it's not as easy to come by as golden syrup so but if you've got malt extract try that so you should now have 18 um, bourbon biscuits split and we're now going to return to actually getting the brownie on the go so i've just got um, an induction hob here so mm -hmm. What I tend to do, just to save on the washing up, I always have a set of these digital scales in my kitchen and I just place the um, pan on there. But some people may have already weighed out their ingredients, but this is just a quick way, just in case people sort of hadn't approached it this way, I just wanted to show. So I've just set my scales to zero. And the first thing I'm gonna put in is 100 grams of butter. Now, I like to use salted or slightly salted butter. Um, if you've got unsalted, that's fine. And you could always then add a sprinkling of salt because I just find with chocolate, salt really helps to bring out the flavour. Um, so I'm just going to... It's so nice to hear because people get very uptight about whether you're using salted butter or unsalted butter. Well, don't they? That's the thing. And in baking, notoriously, you do use unsalted, but I never have. But I've got very low blood pressure, so salt isn't a problem. But I'd say maybe if people are <laughs> drinking their salt <laughs> levels, but the more salt, the better. So, yeah, I've literally just cut off till it's 100 grams in weight, just um, slivers of the butter. So I've got 100 grams mm -hmm. in my pan right there. Oh, you're doing it straight in the pan, not in a, obviously in a bowl. Over no, I'm saving on the washing up, Sampi. It's just, it's lazy. I love this. <laughs> so... Okay. I've got 100 grams of butter in there. I'm then just going to set my scales back to zero. And I'm going to now add in my sugar. So straight to the bag. And I want 200 grams of sugar. But like I said, you could use light brown. You could use a mix of sugars. So you're just looking for double the weight in sugar of butter. There we go. So that means you can kind of scale this recipe up. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That's what the, the recipe from the book. It's all about that. No, I don't. <laughs> Every recipe in my book, it starts with 50 grams. So it's either 50, 100, 150, 200. Because I don't. It's just it's like the building blocks of baking in my head. So okay. there we go. So we've got 200 grams of sugar in the pan. And then the secret ingredient, which is my golden syrup, and it's two tablespoons. And a tablespoon of golden syrup, rather than weighing it out with a spoon, because then it's always tricky to get it off, I just either do 25 grams per tablespoon, so it's 50 grams mm -hmm. of golden syrup going in, or you can just slightly eyeball it. But it tends to be 50 grams. Oh, we had a question, sub, um, somebody asking whether we could use stevia, you know, like an artificial sweetener. It's not artificial, I know. Yeah, I haven't tried it myself, but again, 
you know, like you were saying about reducing the sugar, maybe you could look at doing half sugar, half stevia. And I think it's getting to the point when you don't notice it. It's when you start going, oh, that hasn't got the same impact that you may need to pair it back a little bit. And obviously you do have to be a little bit careful, but also the good thing about these brownies because of the biscuit is that they're already going to be portioned off. So I always say it's worth having something good and like having sort of more vegetables around it than sort of having a sort of too much of a low sugar and not being satisfied. But yeah, do try with stevia um, if you want that, that should be fine. But I'd say still incorporate some sugar. Um, so I've got all my sugars and my butter in the pan and I'm just going to turn it on to a sort of medium to high heat. Okay. Um, so you're basically looking for the sugar granules to dissolve and the butter, butter to fully melt. Um, and obviously, depending on the colour of your sugar, like when I did it the other day um, with dark sugar, it was looking like a really dark sort of molasses caramel, whereas this one tonight is going to be a little bit more butterscotchy. So I'm just melting it in the pan, but at the moment it's just looking like the butter and the sugar and the golden syrup. But um, give it a minute or two and we should have a sort of butterscotchy caramel concoction in the hob um, and also we're going to be adding to this once the uh, it's got a, like a caramelly we're going to be adding some vanilla extract but also if I'm sort of bringing the changes with a brownie like the Jaffa cake one I mentioned that's when I zest in an orange or I've done the coconut nice biscuits and I've zested in a lime and I tend to do that after everything's melted, just so all the zest infuses in with the sort of the butter and the sugar before adding the chocolate. But at this point, I'm just melting the butter in with the sugar. Right, toy in trouble. Uh, there we go. So I'll show you in a minute, but hopefully it just should all be melting. How's yours looking, Sampi? Yeah, no, it's looking pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty I mean, nice. I mean, I chucked massive chunks of butter in, so it's taking a little bit longer to melt. <laughs> so, we've got a quick question here, and I know we're going to get to this, but so that people can get ahead of yeah. it. How big is the baking tray? What so type the baking tray, tray? I've got a 20 centimetre squared tin, because that allows, there we go, for the, it's one that most people have at home, and it also allows for the perfect amount of bourbon biscuits in. But equally, you could... The 23 centimetre one fits more bourbons. And actually, if you're ever doing a malted milk one, that's the tin to use. But I, I've had friends who've only got a round tin or say they've got a loaf tin. So again, if you're just really wanting to make a biscuit brownie and you haven't got the right tin, don't be put off. Maybe just put it on the Christmas list. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to turn off the hob. <laughs> I think the recipe says a loose bottom tin, doesn't it? But mine's yeah. not loose bottom. That's that okay. I've got a loose bottom one, but I'm going to be showing people how to line a tin so it's almost like a little um, fitted sheet approach so it helps to get the um, brownies out at the end. So I'm just going to... So my mixture is all just sort of melted in there, like so. Um, I mean, I know like burnt butter, ice creams and puddings are all the rage. They say oh, if you... Oh, I'm bubbling a bit. Oh, there you go. That's okay. Bottle. That's all right. I was Someone's just... asking what's going on in the pot. I'm just going to... That looks fine. Right. To be honest, if it's a little bit of burnt butter, you're very on vogue. All the flavour. <laughs> there we go. Then I'm just going to add my vanilla. I've got vanilla bean paste, but you could use vanilla extract. And I'm going to put a teaspoon of that in there so a quick question how much sugar someone's asking their sound so it's 200 grams of sugar so double the sugar to butter excellent and two tablespoonfuls of golden syrup is two that right tablespoons of golden syrup so that's 50 grams um and then yeah once it's all melted and sort of like you then add your one teaspoon of vanilla extract or vanilla bean paste and then you should get a lovely smell in the kitchen with the vanilla then 
Oh, we just got a question. Maple syrup. Can you use maple syrup yeah. instead? It's not yeah. quite so sweet, is it? Well, yeah, that's I love it. maple syrup. And then if you added in some pecans or that's really mm. good with digestive biscuits as well. Oh, so, yeah. And is it the same amount of malt if you use the liquid yeah, malt? Yeah, exactly the same amount good. if you're doing marmalade, malt, honey or maple syrup. So... And can you use plant butter instead of regular butter? You can. I've done, uh, yeah, full vegan butter. So, yeah, you can. Wow. Um, and doesn't tin have to be metal? Could it be a china one or a It could be a china one? one. I've even done a silicon one before. If you wanted, you can even use <coughs> those aluminium, you know, the trays that some people do for tray bakes. Mm -hmm. So you could do it that way as well. Does it make a lot of difference to the bake if you use? I, I personally, because I've done it in silicon ones, because I love silicon for tipping, because it gives a lovely mm -hmm. shine to the chocolate. But I find for bakes, the, the, the metal tin, for me, results in the best um, outcome. So, okay. right. So now the pan should be off the hob, everyone. Is that, is that everyone okay? What heat to melt the butter? A sort of medium to high? Medium to high heat. And what about, uh, could you substitute gluten-free flour? Yes, you could, yeah. Could you do gluten free flour or even ground almonds if you wanted to sort of do it mm. didn't have a nut allergy mm. so now we're just going to with the pan removed from the heat i've just this the induction yeah. hob is off here and it was just medium heat wasn't it to melt the yeah. butter medium to yeah. sort of high heat so i had it on about seven to eight on my induction hob and then with the caramelly mm. mixture we're now going to add in chocolate so it's 200 grams of chocolate so it's the same weight of chocolate to sugar so it's quite good obviously most chocolates come in there we go 100 gram bars so you just want to break break the pieces up so i've actually got a mix here again because i didn't have all 200 i didn't have all dark chocolate, but i had a very high percentage dark chocolate like 90 percent. so i've then used 100 grams of milk so it's sort of a mix of both but Ideally, if you were choosing, I choose a 70% um, or 72%, they mainly are, aren't they? Um, cocoa solids. And uh, JLM's asking, could you use white chocolate? You can. I've done, like I was saying to um, Zampi earlier, I've done a custard cream blondie. So for that, I just, use, I just use white chocolate. So you can indeed. It's just obviously a lot sweeter. Um, so I'm just breaking all my chocolate in and then just sort of just sort of coat the chocolate in the syrupy mixture and the residual heat will just start to melt the chocolate. So you don't have to give it a real good mix. You actually just want to, I've just covered all the, um, the chocolate chunks and I'm just going to set that to one side just to allow it to fully melt. So if we're up to that stage i'm going to show you how to line the tin of all exciting things so yeah we're just leaving the chocolate to melt in the pan but you can you don't need to give it too much of a stir just sort of let it all just melt in with the sugar and the butter yeah you're looking good, okay. looking good. oh yeah someone is actually and i do agree i'm going to put my hair up sorry people it is all all clean Zampi's got her hair up. Okay, there we go, out the way. So, um, I have got my 20 centimetre square tin here. Now, mine has got a, a loose bottom, but it doesn't matter too much because I'm going to show you how to line the tin so it makes it easy when you pull something out at the end. So, I've just got a roll of greaseproof paper, and you want the non stick greaseproof paper because I have used greaseproof but it still seems to stick to things like biscuits and cakes. So you sort of want the non-stick parchment. And I'm just going to pull the paper out, just the sort of the width of the tin. You don't need to be too precise, just sort of you can do it by eye. And then I'm just going to cut down. And then you can see there that the paper is sort of the width of the tin there. Um, and then what I tend to do, because sometimes when you cut it like that, it all rolls in on itself. So I just give the paper a brief sort of scrunch up, pull it back out, and it just makes it a lot easier to sort of handle. So you see like that? So it almost looks like sort of ye old parchment paper now. And then I'm just going to place that 
in the bottom of the tin. But as you can see, you've got sort of higher raised bits here. So I'm just going to take my scissors and just cut along the side, both sides. So then you've got enough to line the inside. So the, the paper's all going up the sides there. And then these two bits that you cut off, they are going to just go in the side. So every side of the tin is fully covered. And for those that don't have a loose bottom tin, it means because of these little sides that you can pull the brownie out at the end. Although because of the biscuits in the base, they easily pop out. You don't find it sticks at the bottom, which is good. So what I'm going to do, it doesn't matter too much, but I'm just going to take some of the butter and almost use it as like Pritt stick. So I'm just going to use my fingers and then just run it around the sides of the tin. You don't really need to worry about the bottom because the paper is going to. So just sort of almost use it as like a bit of edible Pritt stick. That's just going to help stick the paper in place. So I'm just going to take my side bits, stick them down like so. And then just take, it's almost like the bottom sheet, and place that down there. And then you will have the bits there coming up at the side. So it's all fully lined, like so. And then we're going to take the nine bourbon biscuits that we've split already. And I'm going to start placing them. Now you want to place them Excellent. with the writing side. Right down, side. down on down on the tin, so the the filling is looking up at you. And so we're, we're kind of making an upside down cake. Yes, exactly. So you're looking at doing three rows of six. Now, some people they like all their bourbons going in exactly, you know, the writing in exactly oh. order. I, I don't worry about that at all. Uh, I actually quite like the look. You'll see when I've got the here one I made earlier. And you're going to be cutting them up anyway, so you can turn them round once they're baked into brownies. And now I'm going to be all obsessional any, about any OCDs yeah. in the house. This is the yeah. top of the hand up. Definitely. <laughs> okay, come on. Who's We're pushing them in the right way up? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, like I said, if you had like a round tin, you'd be putting them in sort of, you could even do like a parquet floor effect, but let's not get that adventurous right yet. So I'm just placing them in the bottom of the tin. So you will end up in total with 18 bourbon brick brownies. So you can see like that. So oh, some of them have a, a sort of the chocolatey bit, but that doesn't matter. That's all going to go in. Okay. Yay. Ta -da. Voila. Perfect. Yours are very good. Okay. So that is ready to fill in with the brownie mixture which we're going to return to now. So if you just take your um, uh, tin and hopefully the chocolate should all have started to melt like so. So just give it an encouraging stir. I've just got like a silicon spatula, but you can use a, um, you can use a spoon if you want like so. So yeah, it's all melted there. And now we're going to beat in the eggs. So you need two eggs for this. So it's like we had two tablespoons of golden syrup. We're going to be using two eggs. Um, now, sometimes I sometimes put the pan outside or somewhere cool. In fact, Xanthi said when she's got a cold fan on, that helps cool the tin a little bit. But I think we should be OK. We're hopefully not going to poach our eggs. But if you had a little bit more time, then maybe let the pan cool down a little bit more. So I'm just going to break in two eggs into the pan, like so. And then I've just got a handheld beater here, but you could, if you want, just use a spoon. And I'm just going to beat them in. Brilliant. And I wanted to ask, Francis, when you were doing Bake Off, that was one of the things that always seemed to be a massive issue, getting things to be cool enough in time. 
No, it was time and fridge space was the enemy. And, uh, and oh. temperature. Yeah. Because you, you haven't got one fridge each, have you? You're sharing your fridges. No, you're sh it was like being in a student house. So you'd be like, can I rent some fridge space? But, and particularly, like, it was just getting hot cakes out of the oven and putting them straight in the freezer. It's sort of not what I'd normally recommend in a recipe, but there, you've just got no time. So you can see that. I mean, like I said, you could use just go at it with a spoon. Yeah. It's got this the amazing bit. sort of ganache texture. Yeah, exactly. It should be really sort of lovely and emulsified. Yeah. So that's there. And then I've got 100 grams of plain flour. Excellent. So it's the same weight of flour as we had butter at the beginning. So I'm just going to put that in. Now, you could sieve it if you want, but it's a brownie, so you don't really have to worry too much about it being too light and airy. Um, but obviously, if your flour's got lots of big clumps in, maybe give it a sieve. Is and that why we sieve flour? Is it to make, does it make cakes lighter if you sieve them? It's it just adds a bit more air in. And like I said, yeah, if you've got big clumps, you sometimes find in some bakes, so there is a clodge of, of flour. It depends sometimes how long the flour's been sitting on the shelf or in your cupboard at home. It can get quite compacted. Um, so I'm then just folding the flour. Oh, it's, how much flour was it again? So 100 grams of flour. Excellent. And we've just got um, somebody asking oh, um, about the grainy sugar. It's, um, has it curdled if the sugar's still a bit grainy? Um, no, it should be. Very good at all. It should be all right. And it will um, melt in the oven because obviously that was just to heat and sort of like melt the two ingredients together. But then it's going to be going into a hot oven. So I have to say, I was a bit worried. Mine was a bit grainy earlier on. But actually, now I've added everything and stirred yeah, a bit. More. It looks so gone. now. You see, I'm left, like you said, it looks like a really, really thick, lovely, almost like the middle you get of like the perfect chocolate fondue. I mean, to be honest, do we have to bake this? Can I not just, so you, you know, eat this go now. with a teaspoon? No. And then obviously to make them our biscuit brownies, we're now going to be adding in um, the biscuits that we didn't use in the base of the tin. But this is my basic brownie recipe. So if you wanted, you could just do this and not have the actual biscuits. But the biscuits just add... An extra crunch and taste and flavour. So I've just got the rest of the biscuits that I didn't actually put in the tin and you can just break them up in a bag but I tend to just sort of do it with the scissors that I've got I had doing the um, baking paper so I just sort of take the biscuits to the hairdresser and I just sort of break them up like that but you could equally bang them with a rolling pin you could break them up with your hands um, and you're looking for a mix of sort of like sort of mix of sort of like crumbs to sort of like chunky bits of biscuit because the idea is that when you cut through the biscuit at the cut through the brown at the end you've got a really lovely cross section of different um, types of biscuit so I'm just doing that but then equally you could just get the packet that your biscuits came in and just sort of break them up that way you don't want massive chunks but you equally don't just want like sort of cheesecake biscuit sand so I'm just gonna empty that in and then I'm going to just fold that through the brownie mixture um, and the other thing if you were making this for probably adult party to make them really bourbon you can add a glug or two of bourbon whiskey yeah, I can um, that. or you could even add some like amaretto if you wanted a bit of an almond mm. twist um a bit of brandy so or if i was doing a jaffa cake one because i know you talked about doing them jaffa yeah. cakes didn't you a bit, you of, bit of quantro really good, really good. Or yeah, rum is, rum's really good if you're doing a lime one as well so now you should just have a really thick mm. whoa brown going on there so i'm just going to take then my my tin that's lined with the bourbons on the base it's a little bit like a tiffin mixture isn't it because you've got yeah, this no there. exactly um and then just sort of dollop it over your biscuits and try and sort of like dollop it in like the corners the middle the mm -hmm. sides just so every bit of um biscuit is covered so in we go 
uh, like so. And I also, I love using these silicon spatulas because they just don't leave any bit of mixture at the side, although that's never really good if you want to lick the bowl at the end, but um, there's always a spoon going spare. So I'm then just, you see here, so it's naturally sort of just folding down to the sides of the tin, but I'm just going to encourage it a little bit with the spatula, or you could do it with a spoon, like so. Voila. There we go. And there you've got your tin of bourbon biscuit brownie mixture. They look amazing. And I just wanted to ask actually a bit about the kind of well the chemistry if you like. I mean if it because you're so brilliant at developing these kind of recipes which have a really simple formula. Can we like what happens if you put a bit more flour in or a bit less flour or what what's what's going to happen yeah the thing that's why a brownie is quite good like i said if you're doing a gluten free because mm. the flour isn't the main component really unlike i say a cake so you're not going to taste the difference as much you know some people say it's getting so much better like dove's gluten free flour is incredible but you're not noticing as much but you still need something to bind it together but i've actually although it has got a lot more sugar sometimes i didn't have quite enough flour but i had a lot of bourbon biscuits so i just oh. blitz the bourbon biscuits into like bourbon flour mm. and folded that for a little bit because flour is obviously in the biscuit itself um so if we wanted the brownie to be a bit cakier, what would we add to make it you would add more flour yeah more flour for, you would add more flour for cakey. okay and more fudgier what do you do if you want it fudgy? Yeah. Fudgy, well, that's why I added the golden syrup, because I right. find that taking out some of the flowing sugar for a, like a, you know, a sort of dollar mm. sugar, that then when the brownie's set, you've still got that fudgy finish. And again, obviously, if you over bake a brownie, it can go a mm. bit more cakey or dry. Um, but yeah, the joy of this one as well, it's lovely just having it warm, but I actually refrigerate this. So it makes it a lot easier to cut the... Um, the biscuits into slices oh. and then that's just like a really lovely thick sort of bourbon brownie chocolate bar oh. um and one thing you could do if you really wanted to go bourbon mad you could even scatter extra bourbon crumbs or other biscuit crumbs or even like nuts on top so you've got a biscuit on the base and then you've still got more texture on the top mm -hmm. so if that if that wants to go into your oven and I, it tends to take about 25 minutes, I find, but I'd say check it after about, just after 20. Because mm. I remember it was Mary Berry on the show, she said, do you have an oven for Mama to Francis? And I was like, no, I don't, Mary. It's the first thing I'll be doing. But they're only like a few pounds from like your local cookware shop or you get them online. But it's so interesting actually, because sometimes what your oven says on the dial doesn't mm. correspond to the heat so you could be out by about 10 or 20 which is obviously going to affect the amount of time you need in there and mm. so yeah that's another that's another thing for the stocking filler a loose bottom 20 centimeter squared tin and an oven thermometer as mary berry would say <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you put the bourbon biscuits on the top instead of the bottom would they burn they wouldn't burn too badly it's just the thing about doing them on the bottom is that the brownie mixture places them down so they're then completely almost cemented in um mm. although someone the other day um they made them and they actually did them on the top and the bottom um mm. but i would say just to get a cleaner finish putting them on the bottom and it's more fun when you pull them out of the tin because you think it's just a normal brownie mm. as i'm going to be showing you um you actually then and could i bake it as a normal brownie like if i wanted to do it Oh, totally. Like, base, it's sort of, this is where they all came from. Hmm. But like you were saying about the baking maps, so that was the basic brownie recipe there. So I just sort of have like a visual pie chart. Um, and then there's a table at the bottom, which shows you how to make a brownie, 24 mini ones, 12 cupcake ones, which I'll be showing you in a minute, this sort of 20 centimeter one. So you can ring the changes. Genius. Um, so yeah, 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 it's like the baking baking mass. But here we are. This is one I made earlier. So like I said, I once it's cooled down to room temperature, I put it in the fridge 
just so it's a lot easier to slice the brownies. Um, so as you can see, this is obviously a loose bottom tin, but because of the, um, the little fitted sheet thing, it just pulls out really simply. Put the tin to one side and then I will reveal the biscuit bottom. So you can already see it coming through. Voila! So you see, you've got all the biscuits there stuck on the bottom. I mean, you can have it there as a, a giant brownie. But um, we're now going to start cutting them into individual bricks. So, where is my knife? Here we go. So I've just got like a sharp serrated knife, but as long as you've got something that's quite sharp, and I'm just literally going to start cutting through in between the biscuits, like so. And because they've been in the fridge, they're just lovely and fudgy. I'd maybe take them out a few minutes before you're about to cut them, otherwise they can be a bit too, too cold to cut through. I mean, if anyone this evening is wanting to have them straight away, you can. Um, but if you can resist, maybe you could put them in the freezer for a little bit or put them in the fridge overnight and then have the joy of uh, revealing them in the morning. So I've just cut one there. So you just get like individual and then you can see like the chunks of biscuit there. So I'm going to start cutting them because then I'm going to show you how you can start making a bourbon biscuit wall. So they're really simple to cut through. Uh, it's like a production line. The bourbon. Francis, if I pulled them down, yeah. like you say, which sounds like makes a lot of sense for cutting them, but I really love a warm brownie. What's yeah. the best way to warm them up? Well, I would say just put them either like we warmed up the biscuits in the tin. You could put them in the oven for a little bit. You could try it in the microwave. Um, I mean, you could even sometimes, you know, if you've made a coffee or a hot chocolate, you could just put a saucer on top of your hot drink and that should just sort of warm it from the bottom. But I'd say probably the oven or the microwave is the best way. And then put some ice cream on and uh, you're in heaven. In fact, oh, somebody, oh, can I just say just quickly, somebody's just asked what um, 160, 180 is in Fahrenheit. And that's uh, 375, 350 or 375. You're, you're the maths person there. <laughs> but you see that one's got lovely big chunks of Ooh, biscuit. In. Yum. So we're nearly here. I'm just going to make a... But you could also, as well, you could do like, like I said, I've done malted milk ones. You could do a lotus biscuits are actually really good. Um, mm. And for the malted milk one, did you add some of that malt syrup? Yeah, I used I added malt syrup for that. Um, in fact, I've done a malted milk and cookies tiffin. Mm. Which is, and I even added milk bottle sweets um, for that. So it's always a play of words. So that one's got really big chunks of bourbon. In there. So, because like you can obviously, I actually did for a wedding the other month, they didn't want a typical cake, so they wanted a bourbon biscuit wedding tower. So I had trays worth of them. So I'm just showing you different ways of presenting them other than just eating them straight away. You Brilliant. Can... So what else did you do for the wedding cake? Did it have flowers or? Yeah, so I did like basically a whole stack of brownies on like, mm. always use a tree trunk to display cakes on. And then all they had lovely white flowers and eucalyptus and rosemary that was just all scattered in. So it was quite a nice contrast with sort of like the sort of dark chocolate and the white. So you can do it like a whole tower like that and you're getting to see all the middle bits. But if we've got any sort of uh, builders in the house, I will show you how you can make it into a bourbon biscuit wall. So you just start lining your bourbons up like so. And then, now you can, if you wanted to, you could even use like Nutella as cement or like lotus spread, or if you've got any leftover ganache, but because the brownies themselves are quite fudgy, they naturally just sort of adhere to each other. So it's a bit like a new take of edible um, Tetris or Jenga. So here you go. And then it gets to see who's going to have them topple down. So, so yeah, if, you, if you're having any sort of like kitchen renovations in the house, the builders <laughs> have a cup of tea and a bourbon. Oh, you see, we lost one there. Are you gonna I'm just got a question. 
about uh, replacing their leftover biscuits with nuts or dry fruit. Yeah, no, I, I love that, to be honest. I sometimes just, whatever I've got, sort of and like half bags of salted peanuts or some cranberries are really lovely in this. Mm. Um, I've even done, well, I've even put cereal in, like granola and like crunchy nut cornflakes. So it's just, I think rather than just having one dimension, go to like your sort of favourite sort of flavours and biscuits and confectionery and just throw it in like that. Ginger um, biscuits, Carolyn's asking. Yeah, all, all sorts of, I've even done here, in fact, because when we were chatting last time, Dante, you were saying, can you do jacket <laughs> or round biscuit? So it's exactly the same recipe, but I just used, you could even do like a, oh, you see one popped up already. Uh, you could use cupcake um, tin and have cupcake liners, but this is just a silicone one. So here we've got a chocolate chip cookie baked on the base. Oh, that's okay. So you just pop the cookie on the bottom. This one we've got a Ritz cracker. Um, ah, that's a real salt and sweet. Salt and sweet. Yeah. And then you could put like pretzels or peanuts on top of the mixture before mm -hmm. it's baked. This one is the Jaffa cake. So if you are doing a Jaffa cake one, make sure it's sponge side um, on the base, otherwise the chocolate's all gonna melt. And then that's the one that you'd fold marmalade through. This one, we've got another cookie going on here. And then this one here, so that's a ginger nut. And they're, um, they're really good. In fact, you know, sometimes you get that jar of stem ginger with the syrup. So mm -hmm. you could then add the syrup rather than golden syrup to add a really lovely ginger boost. In fact, I think it was Rosemary suggested maybe putting some chopped crystallized ginger in. And then if you wanted to, Rosemary, you could do a, a ginger biscuit one. And then one thing I did here, so once you've baked your brownies and they're still warm, all I did was I took a chocolate covered digestive biscuit and mm. placed it on top because it's the perfect size and mm. the chocolate just melts. So you can't pull that apart now. And it's like a double sided chocolate biscuit. And then I even had a mini silicon one. Oh. And I just put little mini chocolate chip cookies oh, in. So it's yeah. you can just go to town yeah. and then the final one i did a giant digestive biscuit and that was just mm -hmm. using the base of a um, yorkshire pudding tin brilliant i've <laughs> got a really good question here from natalie who's used an eight inch round tin rather than an eight inch square so it's a bit yeah. smaller so yeah. the mix is coming up a bit thicker does she need to cook it for longer yes i'd probably cook it for about 30 or 35 minutes um yeah probably an extra five or ten to check it and like i said when you're testing a brownie it doesn't want to be like a cake when you're mm -hmm. waiting for it to be completely clean you still want a little bit of sort of like moisture on there but you you don't want it to be fully molten because you do need to be able to cut it at the end but that's why the joy of putting it in the fridge because it just uh -huh. makes it and that's how you make sure they're super gooey yeah. so it wants to have that sort of crystallized sort of shiny top Mm -hmm. um, and it will also continue cooking a little bit anyway so you're probably best with a brownie pulling it out maybe just before rather than overcooking it brilliant, so, brilliant. oh somebody's used rich tea great idea rich actually tea. i think that, would be delicious. That, that is a good one um in fact also i've done like um you know those fruit shortcake ones i think garibaldi Mm -hmm. are amazing in a 20 centimeter size tin and also i think i was saying for people liking malted milk you can obviously do the malted milk brownie but this was like the malted milk and cookies tiffin so oh yeah clever uh, and that's actually going to be a little bit cleaner to eat i'm just thinking you yeah know? if you're to garden party you want to that, stay in fact someone because they saw the brownie tower they're having a mix next year of bourbon brownies and malted milk tiffins all in a all in a tower so yeah you don't have to wait for the cake to be cut you can just go straight in <laughs> fantastic and how long would you cook the mini ones for the mini ones literally only take eight minutes but there's um a recipe as well like that's in the table in the, in the book for uh -huh. all the times that they take in fact i did little ones that i stuck a rollo in these are like i call them little brownie points and they're just done in a little um oh, good, good, wrong way there um little cupcakes and then i stuck in a rollo in the middle and then just covered them in ganache but yeah they only take like eight minutes 
Also. Does that mean you get like a runny toffee middle? You get a runny toffee middle, yeah. Or you could put munchies in. You could put Rolos in here. That's the thing, like just go to town. That's why I did the basic recipe for the brownie. So that's your base. And to that, you can just go wild. You know, amazing Bombay mix. I mean, whatever you want. I'd stop at the brownies. That'd be good. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, Francis, you've been completely amazing. Thank you so, so much. And um, thank you, all of you, for asking all the questions. Great questions. Maltesers, someone said. Maltesers. I love that. Maltesers, Maltesers are really good. I, I did. I did so many trials doing the book. Maltesers, I find, work better in tiffin because they do tend to just dissolve. Uh, oh, but still, brilliant. you know, give them a go. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. So that's really fantastic. Um, the recipe is going to be up on the website. Don't forget to post pictures of your brownies on yeah, social media. Yeah, I'd love media. to see you can make a giant. Uh, do you know what I'd love to do? Because I've got the Guinness World Record for the biggest Jaffa cake. I'd love to have <laughs> the biggest bourbon and have like a giant building site with like a whole cement mix or a brownie mix. So if anyone's, anyone's got a building site that would be more than happy to have an edible biscuit so yeah but share all your pictures i'd love to see what you do with them all that's brilliant so thank you very much indeed thank you so much everyone hopefully your brownie should be ready in about 10 minutes <laughs>